Hey, welcome to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is a YouTube show where I showcase my recent comic book hauls, comic book speculations, and stuff from my collection. I got an awesome dollar bin haul for you today. Uh, a lot of great finds. I got this 25 books here. I got, uh, so this is a little less, I don't know, 25 comics for $20. Uh, I don't know, what is that, like 80 cents a book? Something like that? I don't know. I'm not here for math. I'm here to show you comics. So, before I get into everything, do me a favor, smash that like button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm, sure as more people will see these videos. If you have any questions, what you see, you have any comment, you want to leave a comment, I'll get back to you accordingly. If you like these type of videos, comic book hauls, comic book speculations, comic book collections, etc., you just love comic books, you love collecting comic books, you love talking about comic books, well, you know what? You're, you're at the right place because this is cold, you love comic books, so do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. All right, let's get into that delicious haul. Marvel Fumente book starring Stan Lee. So this is like an odd book. They had a couple of weird books like this in the 80s. They had like the no prize book. There was like a generic book. It was like a generic hero. And then there was the Fumetti book. And I heard about this. I think I've seen it once. Um, I don't know. It was a little pricey, the one I saw. I was like, I'm just going to I found it a dollar bin. I'm happy to get it. It's like all photos. And it's very weird because, you know, it's that old newspaper print. So, like, the the photographs don't hold up too, super well. But it's still, it's a cool book to have. Uh, this would probably be a cool book to get, you know, signed by Stan Lee. Obviously, you can't do that now. But, you know, back in the day, you know, with him being right in front and center. So, that's pretty cool. Here's some non-dollar books, though. Just showing you. This stuff from the pull list. So Star Wars 43. I did not read that yet. Looks like he's in, like, an at Luke. Looks like he's fighting, like, a generic anime villain in this. It's Incredible Hulk number nine. This is uh, continuing that awesome Hulk line from Johnson. Um, it has a villain artist this time. Eh, it's okay. And then... Ultimate Spider-Man number two. I fell into the FOMO hole. I I, uh, <laughs> I I had Ultimate Spider-Man one in my hand the day it came out, and I passed on it. And who knew that I was passing on the biggest book ever? So I was at the store getting you know my new books, and I saw number two. I was like, I'm just gonna grab it. Just gonna grab it. Or I could see why people are liking it. Interior art's really awesome. It's a cool story. Um. So, cool. All right, yeah, let's get into the rest of those dollar bins. So, like I said, start, really, this was the first one. Max, number 33, IDW. I'm assuming that, I think these are like the remastered or reprints of the series. So, I think this is issue 33. I just thought the cover was kind of cool with the kind of interesting graffiti dot Max logo. Uh, <laughs> this is an awesome one. American Tale, Fievel Goes West. I got a lot of cartoon like licensed books in this in this hall so you know i just give me a heads up if you like this kind of stuff there's a lot of other cool stuff in here but a lot of cool 80s toys and movies and stuff like that so fievel goes west number one i guess it's part one of the smash movie adaptation i guess that means i gonna have to keep my eye out for number two and I, I might have to do a google search and see how many issues of american tale fievel goes west was uh dark order number six uh of a six part limited series dark water number five that's a cool cover and dark water number four i didn't see dark water one through three i will keep my eye out for that one can go for a decent chunk of change uh nothing like too crazy but it can it's easily goes for like 10 bucks like uh, so I'll keep my eye out for the other ones. So that's pretty cool. I thought this was a great find in the dollar bin. The Silver Surfer. This is a mini series, uh, written by Stanley with uh, Mobius. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, the French artist. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is like an interesting comic that came out in the eighties. I have these. It's uh, they didn't have issue two, but I figured why not grab that? This is a Silver Surfer number one with Galactus on the cover. It's in, you know, it's from the Epic line. So I thought that was pretty cool. This is an awesome one. Dragon, speaking of like video games and old cartoons, 
anyone remembers this uh, game in the arcade, it was like kind of like a, it was an animated film that you basically just had to like move your character. It was very frustrating. Like you had to make sure you hit the lights and your character would like immediately die. I just remember it was such a hard game to play as a, as a kid, but it was so cool to look at. It was like, whoa, you're playing a cartoon. So this is a pretty cool book to find. It's like in fine condition. It's got a bunch of spine ticks, but I've never seen it before. And I looked it up and even in this price, this is in this condition, it could go for like 20 bucks. You know, it's not an easy book to come by. So that's awesome. Uh, Transformers G.I. Joe number four. This one's in really nice condition. Transformers G.I. Joe number three. That one's also in really nice condition. This one, not so much. G.I. Joe Transformers number two. I was going to pass on it, but I figured why not grab it? I have an issue one, so I have a full set of these somewhere else, but I had an issue number one that would match perfectly with these four, with these three. So that gives me another complete set of the G.I. Joe and Transformers uh, miniseries from the 80s. That one has that awesome uh, Bumblebee cover. So, who knows? You know, at the end of the last Transformers movie, they introduced G.I. Joe and basically tied it to their part of the same universe. I don't know how uh, the last Transformers movie didn't perform that well, but I would imagine if they made a good G.I. Joe versus Transformers movie, that would probably do pretty good. So, who knows? Naomi, number one. This is the reprint. You know, this book was like blown, blew up for a little bit a while ago, and it's definitely calmed down. She had a show on CW. I watched it. It wasn't very good. I don't think, it, I think it was geared towards like younger, much younger people. It only lasted one season. I don't know if this character is even still active, but I figured why not grab it? And this is a cool, the black and white reprint with the red pops. I think it's a cool, cool find. Kazar, no, oh, Astonishing Tales, number 18, featuring the Lord of the Hidden Jungle, Kazar. Uh, this is in decent condition. It, it's like a nice fine plus copy, maybe almost VF. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, Bronze Age, 20 cents book in the dollar bin. In decent condition. So I had to pick that one up. All right. Dragon, Double Dragon, number four. Number three, anybody, you, uh, any of you remember the video game? The, the original one that came out in 87, I remember we had to like play the hell out of that game. Like we'd put quarters down, like you, you'd put your quarter down like so that, you know, this was your turn and people honored it, you know? <laughs> Double Dragon, number two. They did not have a number one, but that's fine because I have a number, a number one ready to have these join that number one, these other three issues. I don't know how many issues this series has in it. I think it might be six. I have to look it up, but I thought that was pretty cool. This is an awesome find. Not very good condition. Uh, <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles presents Mighty Mutanimals, number one. This is, uh, it was a three issue mini series. I'm gonna take it out and show you guys. It's, it's pretty funny, actually. It's, uh, I would give it like, good condition which is always ironic you know good is not good and actually so like a press could probably fix a lot of the flaws in this like obviously it has a color breaking bend here but like and even on the back it, a good press could fix it but nathan peterson i'm gonna cover that address <laughs> for wrote uh filled out this uh in 1991 but thankfully they did not cut it out and send it. Oh, jeez. You know, I have a feeling Nathan Peterson, age nine in 1991, doesn't live in this address anymore. Uh, but if he does, I apologize if anyone contacts you because of this video. And uh, also the inside, uh, somebody, I don't know if like a dog got to the page or an excited child. So we'll never know what Krang lost was banished. Uh, and, and once... Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I guess I'll have to get a better copy to figure out that part of the story. But happy to grab this. And it's kind of cool because all the, you know, the, what was it? That new Ninja Turtle cartoon. Uh, whoa. 
that new Ninja Turtle movie that came out last summer. Uh, what was it? Mutations. I don't know what. I forgot the name of it, but it had like all the characters in it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Excuse me. I'm gonna... Yeah, uh, the Ninja Turtle movie that came out and had all these characters in it with, you know, it came out last summer. It was like that interesting animation style, kind of akin to the Spider-Verse, but it was like a little muddier. I don't know. So it makes me think of that when I see this cover. So that's awesome. This is a cool, uh, a cool variant of Street Fighter G.I. Joe, uh, number one, sub cover A, IDW issue. Just with the action figure variant with the bison and the snake eyes. And I don't know if anyone remembers this, but the first Street Fighter figures, at least in the United States, street, from the Street Fighter 2 video game, were from the G, from Hasbro G.I. Joe. They looked like this. Like, I don't know if, like what they go for, if they're hard to come by, but I remember seeing those. Um, I didn't get any of them, but they had like a lot of the Street Fighter characters in that similar type of body to Snake Eyes. So that's pretty cool, and that's a fun little reference. <laughs> I don't know why I got this one, but Ka Cirque du Soleil, custom edition number two, not for resale. I figure anytime I see any of these like weird books that are like giveaways of any kind, there's something like collectible. There's like a different type of person's gonna want this. So I figure this is like a fun book to get that I will definitely put up on my eBay, you know, because it's like, I don't care about Circus Soleil. But somebody will. And I will say that is a cool turtle. Uh, this is cool. I love finding She-Hulk books in the dollar bin or super cheap um, to kind of just, you know, chip away at the sensational She-Hulk line. Uh, so this is a cool cover with Madcap and She-Hulk. Uh, cover by Rick Leonardi. So that's pretty cool. And it's in really nice condition. So happy to get that. Oh, I only have a couple more books left. This is the X-Men number one. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to take it out and show you guys. Now, I'm sure most of you comic collectors are very familiar with this. So when X-Men number one came out, it had four different covers that connected. But then they released a fifth copy, which was a more expensive book. It was $3.95. I remember that. I have, this is not my first copy of this. Uh, but look at that. It, it connects. Let's see. Uh, hold on. I don't want to ruin this. Uh, I end up tearing it. So it has the full art. So that's pretty cool. And the I think the I'm pretty sure maybe I'm like imagining things, but the color, the background color is different. But here's a cool thing about the uh the inside also has a poster. And I think, let's see the back one. I think there's a preview. So this is considered, let's see. I don't know. Someone said this was like the first preview appearance of somebody in this. Uh, I mean, those are all characters that were established at this point. Let's look at the last. Let's look at that last page if they put anything in. Oh, yeah. First preview appearance of Omega Reds in here. So that's kind of cool. So pretty cool finding the doll bin. It doesn't go for a crazy amount. It's funny. I looked it up and it seems like those singular cover issues go for more than this does, which is interesting. I would imagine the print run for this is not as high as those other issues. But then again, I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is fun. Pep, number 254. 15 cent. It's like a nice VG fine copy. Uh, one of these innuendo covers from Archie. Pep, uh, we judge the con the contestants by their figure. And Archie's like, Betty and Veronica win. Their figures are 100%. <laughs> Man. Man. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. All right. Last three. G.I. Joe, European Missions, number one. Man, I don't know if I like the art on this. Look at, they all look derpy. <laughs> <laughs> this is like uh the e-bomb have you guys ever seen the e-bombs world gi joe 
you know, they would do those PSAs in the cartoon and then the E-bombs world would have like, they would edit over it. They, they, these are like videos that have been like circulating the internet for like over 20 years. Um, and this is what it kind of reminds me of. This is a much better cover. G.I. Joe European Missions number two um, with, well, I don't know if this is a good cover either. <laughs> you know what? Happy to have them. And then the last one, Harley Quinn number one, the DC Rebirth. Uh, cool thing about this book, I was looking at, first I got very excited and I thought it was a newsstand. It's not a, it's not in a newsstand. The newsstand is like super rare. There's like a guy on eBay selling it for 600 bucks. He's like, I'm the only one who has it. I'm like, cool. <laughs> but I was glad he put, he took a picture. I was able to see what the barcode looks like. So honestly, it doesn't say direct edition. It says like, you know, I looked it up. It took, I had to do a little research, find it. This is the Walmart variant of the DC, of Harley Quinn DC Rebirth number one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Cause now most of the Walmart books have like a gray background, like on the back with, it says like it's a reprint or some kind. Uh, so, you know, this is from like 2017. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's the haul. I think I got a bunch of really cool uh, stuff in the dollar bin. A lot of fun, you know, book, rare finds. Happy to find this, even though it's not the greatest condition. Happy to find this. Uh, this is funny. <laughs> this is cool to find. Just a, you know, cool silver, uh, early Bronze Age book. You know, the G.I. Joe Transformers are cool to find. That's a good book to have a good a good spec book i think dragon and then this is awesome just the that that you don't see that ever and then of course ending it with uh you know what what i started which is this interesting fumetti book so yeah if you like okay let me fit if you like the whole, then smash that like button. If you have any questions what you see, you want to just say hi, leave a comment. I'll get back to you accordingly. If you have any questions, uh, well, I just said that. If you like these type of videos, you like comic book calls, comic speculation, smash that subscribe button, become part of you love comic books conversation. You're going to see a previous video here. You're going to see a previous video there. You're going to smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.